This is plain white pine. This is just from a board. Like a board of pine from Home Depot. This is three quarters of an inch thick because I, that's the way I had to do it for the grain direction on the board. I'll sometimes buy a board with a radial grain running through it so that I can get a longer, get a wider blank like that. And that lets me do bigger fan birds. You need to make sure that the grain, here, let me clean up this bottom and show you. So a log would go around like that. Mm -hmm. And this, these are the growth rings. You want to split across the growth rings. If you try and split with the growth rings, it'll guide your knife and you won't get good, um, good feathers out of it. That's just a decorative cut. It's, it doesn't need to be there. I have made cuts on either side of this blank and those are the holding cuts that will hold the feathers together. This is the joint where you're going to bend the feathers away from the body, and this will be the body down here. The point of this is to get it down to less than an eighth of an inch thick. When I get down to here, I periodically check to make sure that I'm even across here. Keep this angle here shallow. If it's a steep angle, what'll happen is it'll, it'll start getting in its own way, especially if you have a longer blank, if you have a longer blank and a lot of feathers. And now I'm ready to start riding the feathers. So, I don't always use bl blanks this small, but when they are, I have to keep the feathers really thin. And so I will, you, you hold the knife, okay. Let me back up. I'm using a plain knife instead of a draw knife, a Mora 106. You want that bevel flat against the wood. You're not going straight in. You're tilting the knife blade just a little bit so that the back, so that the, that back bevel runs parallel with the grain. That's what helps split it just like a draw knife. When I hold it against my chest, I pay attention to how the knife angle is and then you match this front edge of the blank to that knife angle so that they are the same. Now I'm going to do a thin, I'm going to try and do thin feathers. On a blank this small I like to have at least 20 feathers in there. There's no danger of me poking myself because I'm hitting my, my thumb right here against my chest. And if I need to pivot closer, I can pivot with a lot of control. This blank is a little bit dry, and one of the advantages of using a blank that's a little bit dry is you can get some curl to the feathers, and when they are joined together, that makes for a really pretty bird. It's much easier for me to line up the knife on the top of the blank using that finger than it is to just do it by eye. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Ah, that's enough. Okay, I'm working on making the body now. I'm just gonna get rid of this. Right there, okay. A lot of people will bend these back and forth to get them loosened up. That's especially important with, um, with thicker feathers and when you don't carve. That some people will, will leave that joint there thicker and then when they're done riving the feathers, they'll come back and they will cut that out. That also lets you get that last little bit um, more easily. And then you just hook it in with these right here. Okay, I had 22. That gives me 10 in back. Oh, nope, that's a bad one. Okay, so I've done the feathers. Now I'll do the tail.
odd number and back. You just want a center. The way this differs is you want to, here, you want to keep the top one as your center one and then you're going to hook to each side of it. You'll hook one closest to the front is the center? Is the center. One closest to the front will be your center and then you'll hook to either side of them and make your fan come off to the sides. That was a thick blank there. Uh, I mean a thick feather. You want to keep them, keep the feathers even for the most part because if you have a thick one and a thin one, the thick one will pull on the thin one and um, can break it too. There it is. There's a little fan bird.